Almost everybody grows in their garden. We have tons of varieties. I forget the number of varieties of sages that we have, but you know, in almost everybody's garden, they have you know several variety. The primarily medicinal one, the one I love so much, is just the regular culinary sage, the Salvia officinalis. So you have this beautiful plant that is very ornamental. It's, when you see the sages here, we have a looks like a variegated sage, and we probably have a few white sages. It's just you know, you see them all throughout the gardens. They have those line-headed sages, the big yellow ones, and they're very st stunning in the garden. And even this culinary one that's just hanging out here, kind of creeping into the path and looking so visually beautiful is amazingly medicinal. Most people, they, when they think of sage, they're, they're thinking of like, you know, Thanksgiving and turkey or something. <laughs> it doesn't come out of the closet too much um, in the in the cooking world, but it's always valued when it does. But it's really one of my favorite medicines, um, especially for respiratory problems and uh, throat issues. Uh, it's just a great herb for that. It's also a very grounding herb. So for somebody like myself who can get quite airy, <laughs> um, this, is, this is the herb that I would drink for grounding and relaxing. It, relaxing in the sense that people like me who tend to be kind of high energy, Relaxing is a very important thing. Taking stimulants is not such a good thing for people like myself and half of America. We need things that actually are grounding. And when we get grounded, we have so much more energy. So this is one of the teas actually I use for grounding and energizing myself um, in, a, in a sort of a grounded way where I can actually be really effective in what I'm doing. But any kind of uh, throat issues, like if you get sore throat, making a sage tea, it's classic. This is a classic remedy. Any kind of respiratory problems, this is a great tea for colds and flus. And it's also an herb that's um, for women who are nursing when they want to start drying up their milk. And it's also um, when women have mastitis, this is one of my favorite herbs to use because it helps to take the pressure off the breasts. Mm -hmm. And I use it as a poultice for that. Mm -hmm. It's actually very soothing. Uh, if you've ever been a mother, a nursing mama, and your breasts are all impacted, um, if you put the soothing sage poultice on, it just helps to take that pressure off. It's so healing in that way. So just a fabulous herb in so many ways. And I actually think this is one of the herbs that will come more into use as a medicine. I think this is, I was mentioning a little while ago that herbs move, tend to move in cycles. You know, like they become what I call the cover girls. They get all, you know, a lot of press and stuff. Usually that's driven by companies or, or else in particular by a certain teacher. Um, and sage has sort of been ignored as a healing herb, but it's such an important and powerful healing herb. So I'd like to see it be used more. It's easy to grow, it's very sustainable, and it's very, very effective. Oh, by the way, you know, in, um, in early days in America, when Americans weren't able to get like expensive tea from China and stuff, this would be the herb that they would use. This was a tea substitute. It actually makes a very delicious tea. And I like to mix it actually with this lovely little herb over here that is kind of a companion plant for it. Not so much companion in that you plant them together in the garden, but companion in the way that they're used. This is another little common culinary that we often take for granted. It's a, it's a beautiful thyme. Again, just like sage, the thyme family is very large. There's many members of it. There's a beautiful lemon thyme, and there's, a, there's a, just the common thyme, which is what this one here is. There's so many different times. We all need a lot more time in our life, so plant your gardens full of it. Um, but just like the sage, this plant is very potent and very excellent for the immune system. And in particular, it's really good for the endocrine gland system and the thymus gland. There was a wonderful um, herbalist uh, and professor at the U University of um, Santa Cruz, down in Santa Cruz. <laughs> His name is Dr. Paul Lee. I don't know if he's still there, but he was a dear friend of mine for many years. And he was doing all this research with the thyme and thyme oil, using it for stimulating the thymus gland, which is a very important part of the immune system. And uh, he had this very lovely thyme salve that he would make. And he would have all of us, he was quite a bit older than we were at that time, so we, he was like one of our beloved teachers. He would have all this rubbing it right on our thymus gland, which is located right here, like that butterfly gland. And then he would have us do the, uh, the Tarzan thumb, <laughs> which actually, you know, we, it was funny and we would all be laughing about it, but it actually is stimulating your thymus gland. Um, and the research that he was doing, which he was doing there at the University of Davis, showed that, that actually the, thym the um, thyme oil was very, very stimulating for the thymus gland. It activated it. 
So um, I, I see it as a very important part of the immune system. It's one of my favorite herbs to use when, again, with sage or by itself, when people start to get colds and flus. Morris <laughs> loves it. Morris thinks it's a really good good herb. Don't you, don't you think that? <laughs> and of course, it's a fabulous herb for the bees, which are, in my mind, the bees are the master herbalist of all time. <laughs> they do just what every herbalist wants to do. That's just kind of flit around the flowers. And the bees, if you have a beautiful thyme patch on a hot sunny day, the bees will just be flying around this and pollinating it and carrying off that gorgeous, <laughs> that gorgeous pollen to make thyme honey. So, um, and although talking about thyme honey, you can make a delicious thyme honey by um, gathering up the fresh thyme and just taking sprigs like this and take the flowers as well. Flowers are beautiful. And you, you melt your honey a little bit. You don't want to heat it up because you don't want to kill any of those wonderful active enzymes. But just melt it so it's soft and then pour it over the thyme. Put quite a bit, if you have like a pint of thyme, have a two or three tablespoons, you know, quite a bit of, of the fresh thyme in that honey and let it sit in a warm sunny window or out on the warm on the porch in the full sunlight and the honey will extract that thyme and you'll have this delicious thyme honey mm. and for people who love the little plant divas and the fairies the fairies love thyme it's one of the plants they like to dance around a nice tea to make is a combination of sage and rosemary and thyme and people think, well, my goodness, that's, that sounds like the Herbs Provence, you know, or a Mediterranean blend. But as tea, they're really, really nice. They're pungent and grounding. You just feel solid when you drink that tea.